Good evening and welcome to Vigilant Broadcasting, the station of opportunity presents The Author's Corner with your host, author Kimberly McLemore, as she welcomes her guests into the studio to discuss excerpts of their book. All right, hello and good evening. Welcome to Vigilant Broadcasting Radio Station. I am your host, author Kimberly McLemore, and thank you for tuning in tonight to my show, The Author's Corner. Tonight we have two amazing guests in store for you. Just let me take a couple of minutes and tell you a little bit about myself and the purpose of the show before we start the actual interviews. I am the author of How to Be a Success by Just Being You, Memoir, Deception of the Heart, A Real Look into Domestic Violence, and my new book, Are You Living or Existing? Pros and Cons of Balancing Life. I am also the founder and CEO of the Women's Small Business Initiative, LLC, the host of the podcast show, Your Resource for Success, on iHeartRadio and Spotify, the founder of Author Kimberly and Macklemore, LLC, co-owner of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLC, owner of Vigilant Broadcasting, and of course, this amazing show, The Author's Corner. The purpose of this new show is to provide a platform for new and existing authors, giving them opportunity to promote their books and, of course, their events, speaking engagements, and, of course, we really want to know where can we get a copy of the book. But let me introduce to you my first special guest of the evening, Dr. Yolanda Payne, best-selling co-author of Success Breakthroughs and owner of Yolanda Payne Coaching and Consulting, LLC. Dr. Payne is a spiritual entrepreneur, visionary, and thought leader. She is an independently certified leadership speaker, trainer, and coach who has been recently seen on ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox Network affiliates around the country as a guest on Times Square Today, NYC. Dr. Payne co-wrote best-selling book, Success Breakthroughs, with Jack Canfield, where she received the Editor's Award for her contribution to the book. In 2018, she was honored with the Quilly Award from the National Academy of the Best-Selling Authors. She recently signed a publishing deal with Trilogy Christian Publishing, Trinity Broadcasting Network to release a new book this spring. Her career is centered on empowering individuals to reach their maximum potential. She is seasoned with revelatory insight and experience that inspire, motivate, and transform destinies. Dr. Payne is an international anonymous chaplain, law enforcement, spiritual care, and bereavement chaplain with over 20-plus years combined experience in transformational leadership. She has acquired a unique ability to connect and empower those experiencing a life crisis. Without further ado, please help me welcome my special guest, Dr. Yolanda Payne. Hello, Dr. Payne. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? And welcome to tonight's show, The Author's Corner. I am extremely excited about having you on. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. It is my pleasure. And so as we get started with this evening, please just tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself and what you got going on in your world. Thank you. Um, um, that was an awesome intro. Thank you so much. I often, when people are introducing me, I'll be like, wow, that's awesome. That's me. <laughs> God is so good. Uh, uh, but I'm married um, um, with two children, one in heaven, which is my son, Jeremy. I'm married to George Payne. Um, I have a daughter. She's married. Her name is Kia Landa. She's married to Gerard Rorca. I have a brand new beautiful grandbaby. Her name is Sarah Adeline Rucker. Love her so much. Um, as you all were saying, I am a author, leadership coach, speaker, and trainer. Uh, I own my own business, Yolanda Payne Coaching and Consulting, YP Empowerment, and Paradigm Empowerment. And I'm also the pastor, Kingdom Liberty Apostolic Church. Wow. I thought I was busy. I think you have outdone me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but the thing that I love is that I bet that grandbaby is bringing you back down to earth quite a oh, bit, right? Oh, my yes. Oh, my yes. Yes, yes, yes. So much joy. Well, that is a blessing. So what I want to know is I would like to talk a little bit more about the business mm-hmm. before we actually dive into the book because okay. I want to know more about your coaching and consulting business. Now, uh, it, you – 
are a spiritual entrepreneur, and, and as I yeah. discussed earlier, and you have all these other things going on, talk a little bit about what, how different are you compared to some of the other coaching consulting companies that we have in the area, and what services do you provide? Okay. Um, with my coaching uh, services or my coaching business, um, I, kind of, I, I basically focus a little bit more on, spiritual, on the spiritual and purpose. Uh, and I try to implement um, goals, or rather I allow um, my clients to, we come together and we implement goals that will tap into their spiritual purpose, but it's also able to tap into um, that thing, that desire, that, 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 that dream that they have. And in doing it, uh, we try to, try to implement things like um, um, wealth, you know, a lifestyle, body, soul, spirit. And in doing it, we want to tap into the gift. We want to tap into the gift, the talent. What they have there that we call diamonds. We have diamonds, I call diamonds what people find in themselves that they think are just coals. You know, oh, this thing mm-hmm. is just here and, you know, it's not that important or whatever. But I truly believe in my heart that every person that is on God's beautiful earth have a God-given assignment. They have something that God has tapped, has put down deep down in their soul, in their spirit. And that's that thing that is supposed to help them go that next mile, that next level, whether it's finances, whether it's uh, the spiritual, whether it's emotional, whether it's physical. I believe that God placed something deep down inside of us, and we have to search for it. And in doing that, we tap into the next dimension of grace in every person that I coach. So we go to the table, and we try to tap into that purpose, and that purpose that they tap into bring them riches and wealth in terms of who they are, and they're maximizing their full potential. I like that. And the thing I really like that you said, that you guys look at the body, the soul, and the yeah. spirit. And yeah. I love that you have those things called diamonds, and as I always call them, those golden yeah. nuggets, those things yeah. that, that we have to bring to the table, but a lot of times yeah. people yeah. don't want to tap into. Yeah. And yeah. it's always yeah. funny yeah. because I always talk about how uh, people like to live through the lens of others instead of realizing yeah. what their true passion yeah. is and understanding yeah. that, that we are here for a purpose. And we have yes. a journey, and it's just taking the yes. time to go through that and understand that that journey may mm-hmm. take long to mm-hmm. get to and reach it, but if you dig deep enough, and, and that's what you do, is you dig it out of people to make them understand yes. that we are here yes. for a reason. And and yes. so I really was listening to what you were saying on that. So with your coaching program, what are some of those – basic steps that you are looking into, you know, once you realize and you've had this conversation, say, hey, you know, we know what your passion is. So now let's take these steps to get to that. What are those steps? Um, most of the time those steps are um, them actually writing down or rather looking within their lives and doing kind of like a life assessment. Uh, you know, we go through um, um, the terms of looking at their life, doing a life assessment. Um, I actually have them looking at what they think is not important in their life. And I have them to, to, to write down those things. And then as we do that, they are able to tap into what they think is not a diamond and it's a cold, we tap into it, and I give them uh, um, basically um, um, an outline, an outline of what it is that they desire to do. And I have them to write it down, and I have them to at least do this at least um, on two weeks. When we first start off, I have them just to write down the things that they think is not important, and so they basically do a self-awareness. You know, and look at the things right. that they think that they basically do a self awareness, look at the things that they think is not important, and then they also tell me where they would like to be in the next three years. I want them to tell me that and then tell me what it is that they feel like is stopping them. And then all that, we go back and we come back to the table and we have sessions. And uh, basically, I want to hear their life story. You know, so then they come back and they, I have them to write their life story for me, um, uh, basically, in, in maybe basically two paragraphs. Tell me your life story. If you can tell me what it is that you're doing, I have them to go inside so that we can tap into it. And then we go back and we set goals. We set goals Uh and I hold them accountable. And basically when we tap into it, then we start leaning toward the purpose, toward the negative, what it's going to take to get there, what they desire to give up in order to get there. So basically Uh we just go through different um, outlines and coaching modules. Right, and I like that. The thing that I really got out of what you were just saying is that you are making people 
feel that uncomfortableness and then teaching yeah. them how yeah. to embrace that uncomfortableness yeah. that they're going through so that they can yeah. actually see where their, what their purpose is. And, and then yeah. you actually make them take these action steps in order to move forward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's exactly how it needs to be done. As we always talk about in, in life in general, if you don't mm-hmm. know your past, how can that's you move it. forward? If you that's aren't it. willing to deal with what is currently as well going on in your life, you, you can never really make the movements that you want because you essentially become stagnant. And, and, yeah. and a lot of people are like that. And like I said earlier, that that's when I see and understand, and even in the business that yeah. I do working with people, they're constantly living through other people's eyes. They're living through their lives instead of realizing that, hey, I've got something special, and your business taps into all of those special yeah. things. And as you said earlier, through the body, the soul, yeah. and the spirit. Yeah. So that's the things yeah. that I really um, enjoyed listening to you talk about with your business. Now, you also have been um, amazingly uh, – you've had great opportunities being on different yeah. networks, you know, ABC, yeah. NBC, CBS, yeah. and Fox. So yeah. when you're on these shows – you know, having that opportunity, what do you get to talk about? You know, because I'm excited instead of thinking, I've got an actual celebrity on my show tonight. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh nice. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, when I um, I had the opportunity of going to um, New York, and uh, um, like you said, I was on Times Square today, and what I talked about was purpose. I actually talked about purpose and destiny. Uh, we talked about being persistent. They asked me questions about um, um, how do a person tap into their purpose. Um, they, we just really talked about life in general and talked about setting goals, talked about action plans and that sort of thing. And I just basically just opened up and connected to, to the questions they were asking because it's basically my life. I do it. It's a lifestyle. For over 20-plus mm-hmm. years, that's what I've done. You know, I've actually helped people find their way. I've helped them find those. I've helped them dig in the most uncomfortable situations. You know, I'm also mm-hmm. a, a clinical chaplain. So, therefore, I served as, as a pastoral caregiver in the healthcare setting. I was a hospital and hospital chaplain. Now I do some law enforcement chaplaincy. Um, and so, therefore, uh, we talked about how pain will take you to a place where actually it's an opportunity for you to transform. But many people can't tap into it, or rather don't know how to tap into it. And so we actually talked talked about how purpose, how pain is able to propel you to the next level. Uh, So we talked about that at Times Square. And I was so excited, the opportunity that God gave me and the door was open. I couldn't believe it. But, man, did I take it, and I hit the ground running. (laughs) <laughs> I hear you. I don't blame you. And I love what you just said, that you allow people to talk about the pain, and that pain yeah. helps them go to the next level. It helps them move and mm-hmm. transform. And you are absolutely mm-hmm. right right on that because when I think about being in the situation with my book that I wrote about being in a domestic mm-hmm. violence situation, what yeah. I had went through with all of that pain, that pain turned into a purpose. And even though nobody ever wants to be caught into and put into that type of environment, it has really elevated me in a different uh, format in my life. Obviously, I look at things much differently than what I did in the past, but I'm also able to take that information and that pain that I had and help somebody realize that you do have life. You have purpose. You you know, this is not who you are or who you were. You know, yeah. and so definitely. I definitely agree with you on that when we talk about the fact that we all have purpose, we all have destiny, and that pain will definitely elevate you to a different level. So that is yeah. amazing, and uh, congratulations on that opportunity Thank that you, you had. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And before we go any further, for those who are just tuning in, I want you to know you are listening on Vigilant Broadcasting Live to the Author's Corner. And with me, author Kimberly McLemore, and I have a phenomenal guest, best-selling author, Dr. Yolanda Payne, and she is here this evening, and we're going to be talking here real soon about the success, her book on success breakthroughs, and I'm so excited about having her on it because Dr. Payne is phenomenal. We actually had an opportunity to talk a few minutes before we started the interview and learned a whole lot about each other. And, and how much we had in common as far as yeah. another and a good friend of ours and a family member. So we were just real excited about that. But now, Dr. Payne, I would love for you to talk to me and to the listeners about the book that you co-authored on called Success yeah. Breakthroughs. 
Okay, thank you so much. Um, um, it was an awesome opportunity uh, for me to be able to 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 write and share my heart, you know, and to use mm-hmm. it as a success principle. And I wrote about um, I wrote about my pain. Um, I wrote about my pain when I lost my son. Um, it'll be August twenty sixth, coming seven years. Um, the chapter I wrote was Chapter Eleven in Success Breakthroughs, and the title is Diamonds in the Rough. Um, Mm -hmm. And I wrote this um, in honor of my son, but I also wrote it in honor of my transformation. Wow. And that that definitely had to be painful. And I'm just sitting here thinking, wow, how do we talk about this? And I know that even though it's been many years, you know, for Mm -hmm. you, um, but I'm sure it's still very fresh and and Mm -hmm. something that, you you know, you never forget. So talk to me a little bit about, what excerpt in the book that you would like to share with us, and let's have a conversation about that. Okay. Um, the excerpt in my book I would like to share is the day that um, that the day that my son died. Um, the day that my son died, because I feel like it was um, it was it was a transforming that my whole life changed. That it was a paradigm shift. Mm-hmm. The paradigm shift. My entire life changed um, for the worst and for the better. Um, and I sometimes I do get choked up talking about it because I often say he'll forever live in my heart, but he will also forever live in my books um, because he taught me something. You know, even in my son's death, it taught me mm-hmm. something. I tell people he became my teacher and I became the student. Um, my son was so intelligent. Um, he would often quote things. I used to say he have an old soul, you know. So one day he would tell, one day he came to me and said, Mama, you know what? You do a lot of teaching, helping so many people. He said, sometimes people are not ready to hear you. And I hear you say many times when God get ready and they're ready, then we'll be ready. And he said, and I saw a quote. He said, a quote said, whenever the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And, you know, after uh, my son died, I heard it in my spiritual ear, you know, mm-hmm. whenever the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And I was like, God, appear. I'm the student. My pain, I'm ready to learn, you know, what do I do? You know, I spent over 20 20 plus years helping people in crisis, people that was hurting, people that were going through their worst many times. And so now my heart was broken. It It wasn't just broken. It was shattered into it felt like a million pieces. And so I said, God, where are you? What are you doing? You right. know, what's going on? You know, I, I, I help everybody else, but this pain is too silent and it's too loud. The void is too much. And I said, God, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I, within my book, um, I wrote about, um, I was had that morning before my son died, excuse me, I had gone in my prayer room and I journal, I journal everything. I write, I, I, I just journal, I write my inner thoughts. That's what I do. It's like therapy to me. And so I had went and I started a journal that said diamonds, you know. And so I, I wrote I maybe one or two things in it. And so then I had to get ready for church. And as I got ready for church, I put it away and went to church. Well, my son was um, working at the time, and he called me on my way to church and asked what we were going to eat. And I said, well, you know, I'm not cooking. It's Sunday, honey. Mommy, don't cook on Sunday. You know, I, I preach. I ain't got time for the cooking on Sunday. So he said, okay, I'll pick up a pizza. A, a pizza. I said, no, how about lasagna? We're going to get some from Walmart. And, then, and that's what I said. And he said, I love you, and I told him I love him too. And then the next couple of hours, when I came home, my entire life changed. My entire life changed. And my pain gave me a platform. Mm. Wow. I'm sitting here just stunned. And I have to commend you for even having the conversation with us this evening because Mm -hmm. I can't even fathom what it would be and I know we all have to leave this earth, mm-hmm. and I have a son, and yes. I'm sitting here thinking about just what you're mm-hmm. saying. I mean, we always mm-hmm. take for granted that we always believe that we have tomorrow or we have the yes. next couple hours. Mm-hmm. We have this mm-hmm. time, and we mm-hmm. never know when that time is up. But when you had mm-hmm. said that your mm-hmm. son was explaining to you that, that not everybody is ready to hear what you have to say, yes. and when the time yes. was ready that you would know, yes. he was your purpose. Yes. 
He was yeah. your voice, yeah. and he was yeah. this individual that's yeah. telling you it's time for yeah. you now to talk. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I'm I'm getting out of this, and I'm thinking, yeah. oh, my yeah. gosh, you know, to know that yeah. it's your own child that God had sent to you, yeah. say, yeah. it's time yeah. to have the conversation. And yeah. like you said, to, to teach everybody else, what it means to deal with their pain and how to move mm-hmm. forward in life. And then obviously mm-hmm. we know, we, we all know that one day we're going to have to go through that process, but we mm-hmm. never know when. I, I'm just yeah. like, just was fabricated that, you know, mm-hmm. you have had to go through this. And, and it's, I know yeah. it's painful, to, like I said, to even talk about yeah. now, but I truly mm-hmm. appreciate your honesty. And I'm, I definitely have to get a, the copy of because I have not had the honor to read the, mm-hmm. uh, the book itself and then this portion mm-hmm. of it, but wow. The name of it, Diamonds in the Rough, I mean, it couldn't have been a better name. And now it yes. all makes sense to me how mm-hmm. your platform comes together. Yes. 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 Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Stunning moment. And, again, like I said, thank you so much for sharing that with us because, it, you know, we all don't know how to handle certain things in life, and that yes. I know has got to be the hardest. And, you know, yes. uh and what you do for other people, you are a blessing, a total blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you so You're much. welcome. You're very welcome. All right. So we'll go ahead and we're going to move forward on this. So, Dr. Payne, why don't we talk a little bit about what you have coming up? Do you have any um, new events or any new books that you're going to be bringing out? Um, I have a new book um, that will be coming forth. Um, I recently signed a publishing deal with Triology Christian Publishing, publishing that is um, a part of a Trinity Broadcasting Network. Um, my book will be entitled uh, Tightrope, Tightrope, and it is um, how, to, how to balance life in the midst of crisis how to balance life in the midst Mm -hmm. of crisis. And in that book, I'm going to touch some areas because, you know, uh, I'm a Christian. So, therefore, many times we – and it doesn't just have to be Christian. You know, it can be any person that's going through their spiritual – they can benefit from it from the book, Uh, because many times when we're going through crisis, you know, those are the times where we are asking the life questions. Those are the times that we are asking the really good questions why. I truly believe uh, that every person on earth uh, uh, has, this, has this knowing, this groaning, something that's there. That's, that's what makes us, that's what pushes us to, to, to go toward that dream or that goal or want better, success, do better, want to have meaning in our life. You know, it's that thing that's there. And many times when crisis comes, that is an indicator that something is going to change and we are the ones that can that can balance or that can handle that change for the good or for the better. But so many times, uh, being also a pastor, I paid attention to we many times preach a whole lot or teach a whole lot about the goodness of God, about how mm-hmm. great God is, and he is. But. It's not often that, you know, we go into detail to help those that are on the spiritual walk or that spiritual path to tap into the answers of the why. You know, so many times we're right. told, if you have a question, don't you question God. He's too big. Absolutely. He's too wide. And he is God. Somewhere in that word now, I, I remember reading somewhere there, he said that if we did not understand that we could ask him, we could ask, it's not not how we ask him. You know what I'm saying? It's not what we ask. It's how we're asking him. Right. It's how we're asking him. And our answers are right there not far from us. And so many times in crisis, I've seen it being a hospital chaplain as well as a hospital chaplain. Those are the most vulnerable times that people are looking for answers. Let me tell you, when a person is hurting, honey, religion don't stand in the place. You know why? When that pain so deep, it doesn't matter what religion you are. A person touch your pain, they're going to become vulnerable. Guess what? And that discrimination is not there because they just won't help in answers. That's right. Absolutely right. You're and absolutely so, right. <laughs> In the book, I want to touch that. I want to touch. I want to, I'm, I want, I'm going to be telling people how to rise above that negative energy. I'm going to be telling people or sharing with people 
excuse me, how to how how to catch your rhythm. You know, I'm gonna tell people mm-hmm. after the hurt and the pain how to catch your rhythm. I'm gonna be telling them how to, how how to get their strength up. I'm gonna be showing them how not to move to the left nor to the right, but to stay on course until the pain goes. Because see, pain comes like a wave, and if you if you go through and you got emotions and you're going through grief, those that grief come like a wave. It comes up and down. It has it. It has its intervals, you know, and it has its rhythm. And I want to teach them and talk to them on how to catch the rhythm, you know, so that right. they're able to balance themselves and rise above their situations, just like an eagle. I love eagles, and so just like an eagle, they say an eagle don't fight the wind. He turns his he turns his wings what he's been given, and he lets the, he lets the wing put the wind push him higher so that he's able to glide above the storm. And that's what I want to do in tightrope. I want to teach them how to walk that rhythm. That's what I want to do. Well, I, I'm telling you, well, listeners, you heard it, and it's coming, and I'm telling you that is going to be another phenomenal opportunity to hear and read about Dr. Payne's, you know, her valuable information is is amazing. So I am definitely going to be looking forward to that book. So you absolutely need to keep in touch with me so I can get that when it comes out because everything you are talking about is exactly, it's almost like it's a a page and a version of my life that I went through. And that's exactly the things that I'm constantly talking to other men and women about when, you know, after you come through tragedy and, you know, you, you can't stay stagnant. You have to know how yeah. to move forward. And, oh, my goodness, yes, we definitely have to talk again, yeah. Dr. Payne. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's yes. been such a pleasure having you on. But before, before you leave, please tell everybody how they can get a hold of you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, if you uh, would like to reach out, uh, contact me. You can go to my website, www.yolandapayne.com, or you can uh, contact me on Facebook, Yolanda Payne. All right. Oh, Dr. Payne, it has been such a pleasure. Again, thank you so much for being on the show with us this evening. And for everyone, as I said, we have Dr. Payne on. She is the author of Success Breakthroughs. Please reach out to her. I know that there's somebody who's listening tonight that is absolutely in need of have her help, whether it's in the coaching side and business or whether it's just the other side when it comes to grief and dealing with pain and learning yes. how to ha- know that you have purpose and that you can move forward in life. Again, Dr. Payne, thank you again for coming on. You have a great thank evening. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for having me. You have a blessed night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Welcome back to the Author's Corner with your host, author Kimberly McLemore. All right. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the Author's Corner. I am your host, author Kimberly McLemore, and now let me introduce to you our next special guest author. We have Dillis Victoria, Victoria, author of Your Life, Your Purpose, No Explanations. Dillis went from being a victim who experienced sexual abuse from ages 7 to 14 years old to become a powerful, authentic, and loving leader who went from holding on to fear, guilt, 
and shame to freeing herself and owning the woman she shares with the world. By sharing her story of overcoming abuse, she has been able to create a safe and welcoming space for others to do the same. She realized this was her life's purpose and started dedicating her career to helping fellow entrepreneurs create, format, and share their powerful stories. She took the leap of faith from employee to full-time entrepreneurship and became a creative enthusiast, media concierge, and story manifester. Dillis created an un- untapped market for employees working toward full-time entrepreneurship but acting as their right hand while they work on their exit strategy to entrepreneurial freedom. She uses the art of media story to make sure that her clients – vision and message speak volumes about their personal struggles and experiences along with their professional qualifications. Dills also uses her strong online presence and influence along media relationships and networking connections to keep clients, business, and brands trending that creates maximum engagement along a high increase of visibility. So without further ado, let's all help me welcome my next special guest, Dillis. Hi, Dillis. How are you? Hi, Kimberly. How are you? Thank you for having me. Woo-hoo. Oh, it's it is my pleasure, and you you know, <laughs> I'm exactly <laughs> extremely excited about having you on. We've been doing things for a while together, and I finally got the opportunity to have you on my platform. So I'm just ecstatic about you being on tonight. So, Dillis, just um, go ahead and please tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself, and so let's talk about what you got going on. Whew. Child, what I don't got going on is a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Bill Victoria, 42. Um, I am originally from New York City, but I actually moved to Savannah, Georgia back in 2017, loving it, loving the peace and quiet and everything. I am a powerful, authentic, loving leader. Um, I'm an influencer, of course, a self-published author of my book, Your Life, Your Purpose, and Explanations, and creative enthusiast, of course, and media concierge. And like Kimberly said, I help um, employees transitioning to entrepreneurship. I help them by alleviating their stress, by um, being the right-hand person who gets them interviews with podcasts and other online platforms, um, schedule out their calendars for networking opportunities, for them to attend events, within the areas as well as use my strong online presence and platform to post at any of their events, special offers, um, content, announcements, anything they have going on, as well as submit their events to um, different event submission websites. So they don't have to worry about that. So when they're on the 9 to 5, they don't have to be sneaking the scroll on Facebook to figure out what podcast they should go on or what event they should um, attend because I got them covered. So that's what I do. Exactly, and I'm telling you all, she does a phenomenal job. Um, we have done like some business together, and I just love how I have a, a phenomenal media sheet thanks to you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yes, yes, Dillis Victoria is amazing. She has an amazing story of her own to talk about, and we're going to dive mm-hmm. into that And before we actually get into the book a little bit. So you have been through more than I could have possibly imagined imagine um, as a child mm-hmm. and then having to lead into your preteen years. Talk to us a little bit about your journey. Um, and your journey well, is pain. Um, but talk to us about it, that. So with my journey, um, I was born in New York City, and um, by the time I was two weeks old, my mother had sent me to Belize to go to, to um, stay with my grandparents because she couldn't take care of me at the time. It was very hard, a single mom trying to figure stuff out. And so... I was able to experience the gift of unconditional love and support and what safety feels like by my grandparents. And um, I remember just being able to be wrapped up in my grandfather because I was a a, a daddy's girl at the time. I didn't know that he was my grandfather. And he loved me and cared about me. So that was the first man of my life that I had that was really attentive, respectful, um, had integrity, taught me morals and values and how to, like, truly love other human beings. And so when I came back to New York, when I met my mother at four years old, I came back to New York, and by the time seven rolled around, um, that's when the uh, sexual abuse started with a family member of ours that was supposed to be a father figure to me that was supposed to protect me and all that stuff. And I often say if it wasn't because of my mom actually 
sacrificing herself to give up her child to, you know, help her with a better life, then I would have been able to experience the unconditional love that I have for my grandparents. And if I didn't have that at that point in time, from the time I was two weeks old until I was four, I probably would have been really, really messed up. But Mm -hmm. because I had that, I was able to know what that felt like to have a father figure, you know, um, a man in your life to carry you, make you feel safe and loved. So I experienced that. And after the abuse, I pretty much just lost myself. I lost everything about me, the way that, you know, I perceived life. And Mm -hmm. I was a happy-go-lucky child. And after the abuse, I was just very depressed and very sad and was full of anxiety. And at seven years old to about 14, off and on, that's when the abuse took place. And I was very suicidal. And, um, you know, I prayed every night to God to just take me because I didn't feel worthy, I didn't feel valuable, I didn't feel loved, and I felt alone by myself. And the other part of that is um, growing up, my mom had her her family, my stepdad and, you know, my siblings, and then on, on my father's side, he had his wife and his children, so Dillis didn't have any idea of, like, where to sit. So I mm-hmm. oftentimes I felt alone by myself. I could be with family members in a crowded room, and I still felt alone. I did not feel the love because I didn't know where I sit. Right. So between 14 to 32, I went through tumultuous relationships. You know, I was married at 21. My ex-husband was 19. Mm -hmm. We were together for six years. I suffered um, two miscarriages. I had a stillborn. I had a baby fall out of me at five and a half months, so that was traumatic all by itself. And I just went through really, really bad relationships with men. And by the time I was 32, I hit rock bottom. And I remember one night just sitting in my living room, and my brain was telling me to just drink everything in my apartment from Clorox to perfume to alcohol to peroxide to, to you know, laundry detergent. And mm-hmm. I had to call my mom, and I was just like, you know what, just put me in a cab, send a cab for me, because if you don't do that in the morning, you're not going to have a daughter. Wow. Because I strongly felt like, you know, just, just, you know, just be done with it. Life isn't what right. you want it to be. You know, you're, you're not worthy. You're not valuable. Nobody, nobody's going to miss you. And I had to, like, turn around and do the work. And at the same time, I met my second husband. And God bless this man for, like, seeing through me and knowing exactly what I needed. And he introduced me to the amazing, phenomenal Louise Hay. God rest her soul. She's passed on. And that woman and everything she said and everything I was feeling saved my life. And I did the work of self-forgiveness and self-love and looked at myself in the mirror every every day, like internally, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, mentally, looked at myself and everything I put myself through. And I had to write a letter to little Dillis, the little girl, who was controlling the grown woman because I was actually a grown woman walking around in, a little girl walking around in a grown woman's shoes. Mm -hmm. And I had to write a letter to her for hurting her all these years with just the things that I did and how I was promiscuous and, um, I didn't care about myself, and I had to go through that whole process. And when they say that, you know, when you start doing your work, whoo, chow, it is a lot of work. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Work. Yeah, so, um, I mean, from, like you said, starting with the, uh, a father figure, which was your grandfather, you know, giving you mm-hmm. uh, all the love that you need and understood, this is how life is supposed to be, you know. This is what love is about. Mm-hmm. This is what caring is about. And then have to suddenly go through the process of, being abused by a family member, and as we always know, that it's always the closest person that that, that you know mm-hmm. that's supposed to care about that usually these things happen. And it, though for you to have to go through so many years of this horrible feeling and the journey of thinking that nobody cares about me, you know, all these things are mm-hmm. happening, and then you, you know, decide one day that, hey, you know, I'm ready to go. Let me just make, you know, stop making my life miserable. That right. to me is it's 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 very it's a sounding board you know like oh my gosh you know it did your mother actually come to get you or talk to you about it because obviously you're still here these things didn't happen so what made you turn around besides the fact that you know you had the opportunity to meet other people in the process what at that moment what really changed for you what changed for me was I realized that, you know, life is first living. And the other thing was um, I had a brother that passed away at 20. It, um, it was a situation of a uh, wrong place, wrong time, and he ended up being um, shot. And mm-hmm. the cause of the bullet caused him to die at 20. 
and I was 19 at the time, and that always stuck in my brain, and I always promised him that I would do my best and live in the, my best life. And when I was, like, really down in, in, the, in the dumps and hit my rock bottom, I remembered him, and he's, to me, he's like one of my guardian angels. And his, just his face and his name just popped into my head at that very moment. And I'm like, damn, like, what am I doing? Like, I made a promise to Stephen that I would do this to myself, and I am doing this to myself. So that, too, and the fact that, you know, I met an amazing man who reminded me of my grandfather, who loved me mm-hmm. at my worst and who loved me at my best, and he was willing to stick by me and help me do my work. And so, you know, to my ex, my second ex-husband, because I've been married twice, um, right. he really, 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 really hung in there with me and actually showed me unconditional love yet again and was so supportive and so loving and so helpful. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you're going to beat this. It's not going to take you. It's not going to take you. You're going to control this. And he gave me some tough love, and I appreciated it because it just helped me to, to just grow and blossom into the person that I've become, and he helps me along the way in doing my work. But he also allowed me to do the work by myself and didn't, like, baby me. He, he, he gave me tough love, and that really helped me a lot. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, I think that is phenomenal that you had still, even after everything you had been through, that you were able to look at men and not put them in, in a bucket, you know, and that you allowed mm-hmm. them to help you get through a portion of your life and, and with your journey as being more positive. So mm-hmm. I think that is, is amazing because a lot of times, as we know, when we've gone through certain things with uh, people or certain things that happen in our life, you know, we constantly stay in that vicious circle and you just kind of keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. But at least they were there to empower you. Mm-hmm. And even though those relationships didn't last, it, it brought you to a whole different light. Yeah, I feel like I've always been blessed with the gift of compassion in my heart for people regardless of what happened to me. Mm -hmm. And so I know that my work and my purpose was always to help other individuals to go to, you know, go through the process of doing their work regardless if they've been through abuse or, you know, any form of, like, hard, harsh experiences that they've been through. I know that that was part of my calling. And sometimes you have to put away the ego and the pride aside and ask for help and just let people in. And it's the hardest thing to do, especially when you feel like you're alone and I got this, I'm by myself, I'm strong. But deep down inside, you're like, I am not strong. This is just, this sucks and I'm weak. And, you know, you're trying to go through the whole process. Mm -hmm. And so I learned to just, like, let people in my life. And some people stayed and some people left. Some people hurt me in the process and some people were just amazing. But for me, I've always been the person that um, I I don't want to ever leave this world which shoulda, coulda, woulda, or regrets. So everyone that I met in my life or have are meeting in my life or have in my life now is mm-hmm. for a reason, season, or lifetime, as they say. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I like what you just said, that you do not want to leave this world with any regrets. And you're mm-hmm. right, you can't hold everybody responsible for what somebody else did. And yep. even though... Sometimes you may run into those people that may give you that sign of, oh, they just reminded me of that Mm -hmm. old person in my past and these are the things that happen. It it is no longer them, and you cannot, you know, blame them for what somebody else did. So it's important that, you know, you you do continue Mm -hmm. to move on in your life, and you have done that. So before we move on, I want to just Mm -hmm. quickly tell everybody, look, if you're just jumping on, you have missed some, some phenomenal information this evening. You missed the first guest, but it's okay. You can go back and listen, but you also are currently listening to Vigilant Broadcasting Live, and we're here on the Author's Corner. I am author Kimberly McLemore. I have my second special wonderful guest with me this, tonight, Dillis Victoria, and she is going to be talking about here the author, she's the author of her book, Your Life, Your Purpose, and No Explanations. So, Dillis, let's jump into the book because I want to know more about oh. Look, I love the title. Thank I love you. the title. So tell me how so, first it came up with the title. Sure. Um, I actually was um, on my way to Puerto Rico, and I had a vision that I was going to meet an old woman who was going to change my life. And we were in Puerto Rico for like a week, and this, this was back in 2013. And we were there for seven days. And well, all those days I was looking for this old woman. I'm like, where the hell is this vieja? Like, I can't find her. <laughs> so me and, my, me and my my ex-husband, we were supposed to go to the ruins in Puerto Rico, and, and old San Juan is called El Morro, but it was closed, and then the police officer was like, no, you have to go that way. So I came upon this pink 
Pepto-Bismol looking house. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Oh, I need to go inside. And there was another guardian angel that was there. She was the first president, prime minister of uh, Puerto Rico. Her name was Doña Fela Rincón. And one of her tour guides came to me because I was just like, I feel her energy. Like she's trying to tell me something. What the heck? Mm -hmm. And so the woman took me upstairs and she started telling me that um, Doña Fela was never married. I mean, no, she never had children, but she, and she was married, and she gave all of her heart and her soul and everything to the orphans of Puerto Rico. And as she was telling me the story of the Venezuela, I started crying profusely, like somebody passed away, and my ex-husband was looking at me, what the hell is wrong with you? And I'm like, I could just feel her hugging me, and it's so beautiful. And then the woman was like, Dona Fela says for you to go and write your book. And that's how that started. And I went back to New York, and I just sat down at the table one day with my laptop, and I just started writing. And I was writing like I was in a trance, like I couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. And it it was like a whole hour I was just writing, writing, writing. And then I just looked at the book, and then it was like, wow, this is my life, and this is my purpose, and I don't have to explain nothing to nobody. And I was like, holy crap, your life is called the transformation. (laughs) It's like, there it is. <laughs> there, yep, well, there it is. And so, you know, I paid Kate homage, and I'm humbled and grateful and thankful for her being one of my guardian angels to actually seep into my spirit and my soul, you know, my, my whole way of being, because I'm an intuitive empath and a healer and a master manifester at that. So I mm-hmm. actually often connect with ancestors and spirit guides, and um, she was one of them to just guide me through this, this writing journey, and I've never written a book before. I had no clue about a manuscript. I, didn't, I knew nothing. I just knew that I needed to write and mm-hmm. get my message out there, and I started doing all the research, like how to publish a book, how to self-publish a book, what website should you use, how the hell do I use Amazon. Like I was just Googling everything. Right. And that's how, this, that's how it just came about. Wow. Well, happened. like I said, the title is phenomenal. So talk to me more about what's in the book. Because, you know, okay. you've got um, your life, your purpose, yes. no explanations. Uh-huh. I mean, that, those three items alone could be a book on their own, right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So in the book, I pretty much, every chapter, I talk about um, specific titles. Like one title is called Taking a Risk, Taking Risk and Leaps of Faith. And that's about just um, not allowing your fears to allow you not to jump or, you know, um, break down the box and and build another box, hell, build a a, a circle if you have to. But Mm -hmm. don't allow life to pass you by without, you know, having the desires of your heart come to fruition. And then the other part of that is uh, my own experiences of how I decided to take a leap of faith and take a risk. And then I would ask specific questions pertaining to that chapter. It's an ask yourself question. So it's kind of like a self-help worksheet, work personal development type of book. And then on top mm-hmm. of that, too, each chapter I would dedicate to a person who's helped me overcome specific challenges in my book. So it's four different things. Mm-hmm. I like that. So, I definitely like that, mm-hmm. uh, how you are, like I said, piecing it together so that people understand yeah. that they can analyze and review all the things that mm-hmm. are going on with themselves so that they know what their purpose is, and like you said, they mm-hmm. don't have to explain why they are doing what they're doing. So I do like that. Absolutely. So, so tell me, though, what would be your favorite chapter of the book that you can share with us tonight? I think for me would be the self-reflection and self-forgiveness. That would mm-hmm. be the part for me. Um, and the reason why is because oftentimes as people, we tend to not self-reflect and we don't self-forgive. We are easier to forgive. It's easier for us to forgive other people as it is ourselves, and we're so busy and so conditioned to run, you know, the rat race every day and do work and come home and be moms and wives and husbands and, you know, boyfriends, girlfriends, and, and so on and so forth, and we don't ever tend to give ourselves that time to reflect on the things that we've done that's lingering in our brain as ca- and causing us to have anxiety and depression all this, and all of the diseases in life. And then we don't forgive ourselves for it because we're not conditioned that way. We're conditioned to, you know, do this for this one, do this for that one. But when it comes to self-love, that's an uncomfortable conversation. And it stems back from generation to generation to generation. Mm-hmm. So with that chapter, self-reflection and self-forgiveness, 
I'm actually discussing how I went through the um, the transition of not loving myself to just doing the, the forgiveness part of it and how hard it was for me to forgive myself and how hard it was for me to self-reflect because of everything I did to myself. And when I came to that rock bottom, like I'm like, you know what, you really need to do better. So that's my favorite chapter because it helped mold me into the person that I was, the person who who I've become and the person who I'm becoming because I feel like I'm forever evolving. Mm-hmm. Right. And and I, I like the chapter that you picked because you're absolutely right when we talk about self-love is the hardest thing. You know, we are our mm-hmm. worst critics to ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, we always have something, you know, we look in the mirror, it's, oh, we don't like this. And, and like I said, if we're dealing with pain, we, we would rather ignore it. It's always easier to help somebody else than it is to reflect on yourself and deal with your own situation. So the, mm-hmm. that chapter, I absolutely agree that that is probably one of the best ones because we all have gone through something in our lives that we Mm -hmm. need to forgive ourselves. And as we always talk about when we have been in a situation, we always say, oh, well, you know, I forgive them. Well, when are you going to forgive yourself? And and that is, you know, the most important piece because you can't change what's happened. So in Mm -hmm. order to move forward, you have to be able to forgive not just the other person, you, you, you forgive yourself. And that's the most mm-hmm. important piece. And to learn to love Absolutely. yourself in a way that, you know, that portion of your life is over with. And as we were just talking earlier, you know, about not being stagnant and realizing that you have purpose. Yes, exactly. And um, the purpose comes with the self-forgiveness because for me, once I did self-forgiveness, an aha moment popped into my head and it was this life coach. Oh and the heavens opened up and the certification was flying everywhere. And I was just like, oh, this is what this feels like, you mm-hmm. know, but it was, it was a struggle. And there's st- still sometimes when I reflect on specific things that I still have to forgive myself for specific things. And forgiveness happens a million times, time and time and time again. It's not one time you're going to forgive yourself for something because mm-hmm. as you live and grow, you're going to make more mistakes and you're going to have regrets and you're going to have to go through the whole process of reflection and forgiveness. Absolutely, absolutely. But I also like that what you have learned in life, you've taken all this and have wrapped this in, into a beautiful packaging mm-hmm. of, hey, this is how I can help you. Because I even remember when we were going through the process of putting together the media sheet, you know, as part of your business mm-hmm. stuff, you, you were asking mm-hmm. me pointed at questions that I was thinking, wow, you know, I have to right. think a little deeper than this. <laughs> yes. you know, it yes. wasn't yes. just the, just- huh? When I did the media sheet, when I came up with the concept of the media uh, story questionnaire, I had mm-hmm. to dig, dig deep within myself because these are questions I asked myself. And I was like, okay, in order for me to do this media story and design this media sheet to perfection in um, helping clients reveal the most exceptional yet over, overwhelming, frustrating, struggling part of themselves for people to get to know who they are on a different level because they see the professional but they don't see the sacrifice and the struggle and the stuff that you have to go through mm-hmm. that, you know, allowed you to become the person that you are where, you know, you told yourself, I'm not going to allow this to defeat me. I'm not going to allow this to define me. This is who I am. This is who you're supposed to see. Not mm-hmm. the glitz and glamour that you see on social media, but the person internally. And this is the work that I have to do and everything that I have to go through to get from point A to point Z so I can help you do what you need to do. Absolutely. And you're right. And I talk about that all the time where people, when they see us, you know, they think, oh, my gosh, mm-hmm. you're doing so great. It's always the shell. Nobody really truly understands what's behind that shell. And that's one mm-hmm. reason I love having my talk shows and, you know, giving people the opportunity to just sit down and just share your story because mm-hmm. people need to understand that it is a journey. It is a process. It is not mm-hmm. just, oh, I decided, like you said, wrote the book and the next thing you know I'm famous and nothing ever happened. It's just, you know, Mm-mm. none of these things are made up. This is reality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so true. And people have this notion that, you know, you're going to be famous in 5.2 seconds. You're going to be an Oprah. She's going to read your book, and you're going to be famous and whatever the case may be. No, sweetie, it doesn't work like that. It may work like that for some people, but mm-hmm. I feel like you should want to go through the process of crawling before you walk and getting there slowly but surely so you can actually – find out what each experience is going to look like and how you're going to handle it. Because if you go from baby steps to on Oprah Winfrey, 
Are you going to be able to handle it mentally, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, physically? Are you going to be able to handle that? Because that's a lot of pressure. It comes a lot. If you are not prepared, then mm-hmm. that's something that I don't wish for ever. I like to go to Starbucks and order my chai latte with nobody bothering me. I like that. I'm going to keep that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So for right, me, right. Like, I don't need that. I mean, that, that. I mean, it's great to be seen and known and all well, that good stuff, but at the same time, sometimes we just have to appreciate our, our presence, our peace, and our silence and our calm and just being one with self at times. And a lot of times, um, a lot of people, when they see celebrities on social media or media, they're like, mm-hmm. oh, I want that life. But no, you don't. You have no yeah. idea what that person is going through behind closed doors. Mhm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, and it, but we see some of that, you know, almost every day. You know, when you listen to the mm-hmm. news or you see what's going on, and I always tell yes. people, they're celebrities, but they're human beings. You know, they're always going to be human before they are anything else. Absolutely. And, and you're right. So, you know, their lives are really no different than ours. The only difference mm-hmm. is, is that they are in the public eye more. And as, mm-hmm. as we all know, as we continue to grow in our businesses, we're all going to go through that same process. But like you said, are you ready for that? And, and mm-hmm. I love what you just said about, the, you know, learning to enjoy the peace and the silence and that it's okay mm-hmm. that you're not always in the front, you know, and then that limelight world, yeah. you know, because once you're there, it, it is, it's a whole different perspective. Absolutely. Yeah. Lovely. There ain't no coming back. <laughs> there ain't no coming yeah, back. That's the goal, right? <laughs> that is the goal. You don't want to go backwards. You want to continue to move forward. Yeah. <laughs> but, Dilla, so, you know, tell can you tell the listeners a little bit about, you know, if you have any events coming up and then, of course, where we can find you and reach out to you if we would like to get some of your great business information or want to purchase a book? Absolutely. Um, I'll leave off with um, one of the – my life oath or that I um, put in the book as well, it's my life oath. I have an obligation and dedication to myself and to God to do well in my life. I choose to put positive vibes and energy into the world, knowing that it will come back to me in the same way. I choose to be good to myself and those around me. I will pat myself on the back, back for things that I do well and continuously remind myself that I'm human and not perfect. I will no longer beat myself up emotionally, mentally, or psychologically when things go wrong. I choose to practice positive thinking and positive living. I will not allow anyone to take my power or to drain me. I choose. Mm, Love it. Love it. (laughs) I do love that. I was sitting here just listening. I'm like, that's that's perfect, and that's actually Mm -hmm. a perfect way to end. But before we leave, I would like for people to know how they can get a hold of you and reach out to you. Absolutely. You can um, connect with me on Facebook. It's Dillis, D-H-Y-L-L-E-S. Thank you, Mom. I don't know where the heck you came up with the name, but I am the only Dillis on there. So if you even Google me, look for me on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, every social media platform, you will find Dillis, D-H-Y-L-L-E-S. You can um, friend request me, inbox me, or um, email me at info at createyourmediastory.com. And, yeah, that's what it is. So createyourmediastory.com, Dillis on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as LinkedIn. So it's just D-H-Y-L-L-E-S. All right. Well, Dillis, thank you so much for being on tonight. You were phenomenal as I expected. <laughs> Love you to death. Thank you thank for you having me. My Love guest. you too. <laughs> I appreciate you, and I love everything that you're doing. I celebrate you. Every time I see Kimberly doing something new, I'm like, yes, Sister Queen, you go, girl. That's right. That's right. That's what I'm talking about because you inspire me. I'm like, damn it, Kimberly's doing something else. She's going to have to go create something to, like, top her. (laughs) I love it, girl. I, I love the fact that, you know, I'm able to have the opportunity. You know, God is definitely bringing me along a lot further than what I could mm-hmm. ever imagine, and I absolutely feel like I have a long way to go. Uh, but I really appreciate, you know, you and everything you have done and helped me out, and, you know, our journey together is still not over. So, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, girl. Trust and believe that. we got a long way to go. we got a long way to go. So I definitely yes, ma'am. Appreciate- Yes, thank you. And again, thank you for coming on the show this evening. And as I said, for everyone else, this is beautiful Dillis Victoria. She is the author of Your Life, Your Purpose, and No Explanations. If you need to get this information, you'd like to get her book, or you'd like for her to help you Mm -hmm. um, expand your brand, 
reach out to Dillis Victoria. Thank you again this evening, Dillis. You have a wonderful night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right, and for everyone else, again, thank you for all listening into my show this evening, The Author's Corner. If you're interested in being a sponsor and or a guest on The Author's Corner, just send me a short bio, a book cover, and a professional pic, and you can send that to my email address at KimberlyMMacklemore at gmail.com. Again, that is KimberlyMMacklemore at gmail.com. You can also follow me on all social media platforms, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you also can look at our YouTube, my YouTube channel, which is the Women's Small Business Initiative, LLC. And then also I want to say thank you for tuning in tonight to Vigilant Broadcasting. Please stop by and like our talk, radio, and TV network, LLP, social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. But join me next month for another amazing show. But until next time, have a wonderful evening and good night. Good night, everyone, and thank you for tuning in tonight. We'll be back next month on Friday evening at 7 p.m. EST with two more amazing guests. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Periscope at author Kimberly McLemore and at Talk Radio TV Network, LLP. 